Hello, I'm j u n g y o n g Kim from KAIST. Today, I'm going to talk about our paper, The Abusual Inside Apps, Finding the Corporate Committing Mobile Ad Fraud. This is a joint work with my colleague j o n g a n Park and my advisor, s u e l s o n Mobile advertising is becoming more and more popular. In 2020, about $200 billion spent for worldwide mobile advertising. It's bigger spending than TV ads and desktop ads. However, it's known that 9-20% of total advertising spending is lost due to mobile ad fraud. In 2020, about $40 billion was predicted to be lost due to mobile ad fraud. So, what is mobile ad fraud? Before explaining it, I'll briefly explain the mobile ad ecosystem. Mobile ads are the preliminary monetizing source for most apps. A developer publishes an app that displays ads. A user interacts with ads by click and impression. Each ad interaction generates ad traffic to ad network. The ad networks pay the developer. I briefly explain how mobile fraud works in this ecosystem. Here, the adversary publishes ads that contain code that perform ad fraud. Even if there is no user interaction, the embedded fraud code can create artificial user interaction and force a victim to interact with ads. Now, this forced interaction generates unwanted ad traffic to ad network. The ad network then pays the adversary because of forced grid traffic. I'll explain two detailed examples of mobile ad fraud. First is click fraud. A code in fraud app generates forced user interactions such as click on ads. The forced click can generate ad traffic to make ad revenue. Besides, Fraud code can generate only ad traffic without forced interaction. The second example is impression fraud. The fraud code can invoke cross-app intents that call other apps into foreground. This behavior can make unwanted ad impressions in a third-party app. There are two previous works to identify ad click fraud using a dynamic Android app testing system with an Android emulator. Here, dynamic means that They execute on target app and detect ad fraud based on observed app behaviors. Mad fraud found click fraud occurrence by detecting ad click traffic in an environment without user interaction. Mad r i p e identified that the ad landing page is automatically loaded in ad web view. There are three limitations in the previous works. First, The previous works cannot pinpoint the ad models responsible for the observed fraud activities. A responsible model can be app code or third-party library code. It's important to know correct response model because fraud behavior can originate from embedded third-party libraries, not their hosting app that can be a victim of embedded third-party libraries. Second, the previous works list the testing environment having limited user interaction. When an app requires user interaction before committing ad fraud, previous works cannot detect the fraud behavior. Last, previous systems leverage emulators to conduct dynamic testing. Thus, the system may not observe ad fraud activity that only appear on real mobile devices. Based on the three limitations from the previous studies, we propose a new dynamic testing tool for mobile ad fraud detection. We propose Fraud Detective, that is a dynamic testing framework that identifies ad fraud activities with its causal relationship. I will explain how Fraud Detective addresses challenges from previous works. First challenge is they cannot pinpoint responsive models. Fraud detective can pinpoint the app model responsible for the observed fraud activities using stack trace information. Stack trace is a report of API core sequence at a certain point during the execution of a program. If we can get a stack trace between forced click and fraud ad traffic, we can know the fraud responsive models. When an ad click occurs, our system starts to make a stack trace. The system saves the stack trace at a point of click occurrence. If the system can come to the stack trace from click occurrence to ad traffic occurrence, we can conclude that ad traffic was caused by forged click. Also, the stack trace contains information about who called the click, the module, 
library C that invokes click is responsible for this ad fraud. However, a stack trace for fraud activity is often fragmented due to the usage of multiple threads, Android handler, and external process. Because the stack trace information is generated per thread, if the thread where the interaction occurs and the thread that is generating the ad traffic are different, we need to combine the fragmented stack trace. We connect the fragmented stack trace by modifying every source code related to thread invocation in AOSP. We call this combined stack trace as a first stack trace. Let's see how the first stack trace is generated from this execution flow. First, when the click occurs, our system saves the stack trace information. When thread 2 is created by a new thread creation, we propagate the stack trace of the click thread. Also, when thread 3 is invoked from thread 2 using Android handler, it delivers stack trace information. If thread 3 generates ad traffic, we can see through first stack trace analysis that traffic is generated by click. We'll briefly explain how we dealt with second and third challenges. The second challenge is limit user interaction. Fraud detectives support user interaction to increase app testing coverage. Fraud detectives use UI automator to support aid interaction, including accept Android permission, accept cons custom consent of app, change applications, press home and back buttons. Of the fraud apps we found, 30 36 apps require the above interaction to find fraud behaviors. The last challenge is using the Android emulator. Fraud detective uses a real Android device for dynamic testing. Now we use 8 pixel to device with custom AOSP installed for dynamic testing. Note that we revise the AOSP for computing full stack trace and leaving tags low. 19 fraud apps require a real Android device to run. I'll explain how to detect fraud using first stack trace. Before I explain the process, I'll talk about three fraud types that fraud detectives can detect. First is type 1 fraud. Fraud code click on ad display in the app. And the click ads and click URL request to add in networks. Type 2 ad fraud occurs when the fraud code generates on ad traffic sent directly to the ad networks. The difference from type 1 fraud is that only fraud occurs without any interaction. Type 3 ad fraud invokes cross app intent that brings third party apps into the foreground without any interaction. The third party app uses the target URL using YouTube or web browsers. I'll explain how we how each type of fraud can be detected by first stack trace. First, I'll explain how first stack trace capture type 1 fraud. Here is first stack trace computed by click thread and web view client thread. Click is generated in the FST because the click method was invoked. We can conclude Comda library C generate click events because the preceding method of click events is start click from Comda library C in this first stack trace. On the other hand, if all the methods that precede the click event belong to Android system class, this click is triggered by a real user click. Ad traffic is occurred in load traffic method in Chromium web view class. We can conclude that ad click traffic is caused by Comda library C. This is because Com library C generates a click event that generates ad traffic in the web view. This is an example of type 1 FST that creates an ad interaction generate ad traffic. I will explain how FST capture type 2 fraud in both fraud activity without any interaction. Here's FST completed by WebView client and WebView thread. The start WebView method is invoked by Comda library B. This method also invokes load URL of Android WebView. Load URL method load given URL parameter in WebView. Ad traffic is occurred in load traffic method in Chromium WebView client class. We can conclude that load URL in library B generates click traffic. 
This is an example of type 2 FST that creates air traffic without any interaction. I will explain our evaluation result. We crawled 48k apps from Google Play Store and used them in our experiment. We reported 74 apps that generate ad fraud with 34,000 fraud record. Type 2 fraud is most common of three types. There are 66 type 2 fraud apps it generate click traffic without interaction. Besides, there are 8 type 3 ad fraud apps it generate cross-save intent without any interaction. There is no type 1 fraud, but we're pretty sure there wasn't any type 1 fraud behavior because we confirmed that no touch event occurred during the experiment. Fraud detective reports that 73 apps committing ad fraud behavior from third-party libraries. It's 98% of fraud behavior originates from embedded third-party libraries. Only one app generates fraud by itself. We found 13 fraud third-party libraries in this experiment. I briefly show the behavior of fraud libraries. Ad click traffic originates from library A without user interaction. It's type 2 fraud. It loads a web page containing 40 ad click traffic. The web page loads when an ad impression are rendered by web view. Eight apps generate type 3 fraud through three libraries. It generates cross save intent to third party apps such as YouTube, Neighbor, and Default Browsers. Fraud detectives show 5 to 12 times more fraud app detection rate than previous studies. We believe that improving testing cover is one of the main costs. We received 38 apps listed from Mad Life authors. Among these 38 fraud apps, 8 apps are duplicated or unable to run. We analyzed the remaining 30 apps with Fraud Detective. Fraud Detective successfully reported 30 fraud apps with no false positive. 30 apps commit type 3 fraud which is cross-save intent invocation without any interaction. Fraud detective found that fraud response model is originated from library E and another third-party library. I will explain the side effect of type 3 fraud. When a user using a mobile app, suddenly the neighbor apps pop up and search for a specific restaurant. From the user's point of view, the neighbor app is forcibly displayed in the foreground this behavior invokes by type 3 fraud app installed in the user device. In addition, we confirm that type 3 fraud also display gold pressing videos through YouTube app. This behavior caused the user to blame the neighbor and YouTube app using negative comments. We report the behavior with response model to neighbor and Google. There are three limitations for fraud detective. There are five unmodified concurrent queues in our AOSP. When a developer uses an unmodified concurrent queue for their app, Fraud Detective will produce an incomplete FST. We generalize ad click traffic patterns from the manual investigation of major ad libraries. However, there still exist different patterns of click URL that we did not capture, thus producing false negatives. We need to Add library identification. We observe the third party library package and class name. If add library source were unavailable on the internet, we leverage the names of classes responsible model for fraud activity to deduce add service name. When these class names are obfuscated, we find matching classes from other apps without obfuscation. Conclusion, we propose the first dynamic testing framework that identifies ad fraud activities and their causal relationship. We propose a novel approach of computing full stack trace for causal relationship analysis, including responsive module. Fraud detective reports 74 fraud apps and their fraud responsive modules and list fraud type. And thank you for watching our presentation.